Good evening one and all and welcome to the video. My name is Samil Shah. In this video, I want to share one of the projects that I've been working at my firm. This project essentially talks about a robust architecture to populate data lake from MongoDB Atlas using MongoDB Streams Event Bridge SQS Lambda, a journey of processing 20,000 events per day. I'm going to be sharing some of the good practices. I'll be talking about the settings that I use for SQS and other things uh, in this project. Um, I wrote a nice article on LinkedIn as well. If you want to check uh, that out, the links are in the description, so do check that out. But let's go to the, the, the project, right? How we made this project, right? So essentially, this is the architecture. We'll, we'll go that in the second, but let me introduce you to my team members. Um, of course, me, I work as a data collection and processing team lead. We have Hariom Dubey, who works as a consultant software engineer, um, essentially Python developer. April Love as a software engineer. Um, Himadri as junior data engineer. Birendra Singh as um, search engineer. Uh, special thanks to the mentor, Donald and Paul. Well, we had data scattered in various places such as Mongo, SQL Server, Dynamo, and it's not very easy to access all the data in one place. So we attempt to solve this problem um, by bringing all the data to the data lake so the business can query the data easily, right? So I'm about to share you some of the um, approaches that we took to do this, right? Uh, so it's gonna be a fun, exciting video where you will uh, get some nice technical insights about this. Some fun uh, insights, uh, we deal with large amount of data. Um, we also have um, developed an internal batch framework. If you wanna read that, uh, the, the links are in the description. Uh, the framework essentially processes one terabyte of data worth um, in a month. So uh, you can see the amount of data we de deal with. Uh, we deal with a lot of big data, right? So it's fun to work with the big data. Uh, the architecture, right? So the idea or the goal is to develop a MongoDB stream. As soon as the data is inserted, it flows through the streams and it goes through the event bridge uh, and where we have an event bus. On that event bus, we have a custom rule. So the document matching the rules will be um, populated on an SQS queue. From SQS queue, we have a Lambda. Lambda essentially tries to upload the data uh, two times. If it fails, it uh, populates the data back to the dead letter queue. Uh, from the dead letter queue, we have an SNS topic where we publish it so that the users are notified that, hey, something went wrong during a process. So we have a notification system as well. Pretty good, right? Uh, once it lands on the uh, DLQ, we have a redrive policy. We essentially put all the data back to the source queue. Uh, so that's that. So uh, I have a video where I essentially talk about MongoDB streams. I teach essentially how to configure that on MongoDB Atlas. So if you want to watch that, uh, the links are here. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll po point that out. Here you can see the amount of SQS messages we process, right? Uh, this is essentially a chart of, I guess, one day. Yeah, it's a one day chart. Nearly around 6,000 events, uh, a bursty events we get. We usually, usually put these events in an SQS, right? So very large amount of events. Now, one of the problems, you know, when writing Lambda function is, you know, how do I know whether I'm over allocating or under allocating my resources on Lambda? How do I make sure that the right amount of memory is allocated? So we essentially perform something called Lambda power tuning. So with the help of step function, we essentially tuned our Lambda and we, we, we essentially said, okay, what's the best sweet place where I get the best performance and the best cost? So we took that, so we tried to save cost with that approach, right? So we saved thousands of dollars for the company using that approach. A video is there if you wanna watch more. Uh, these are the Lambda trigger. As you can see, a whopping, I guess, 20,000 Lambda, I guess this is a week, yeah. So in a week, we have been firing literally more than 20 to 30,000 Lambdas. That's a lot of Lambdas, right? So essentially cost was uh, important thing. So we wanted to make sure everything is optimized and you know done it in the right way. So we did that. We also dive deep into uh, concurrency. Uh, we observed that during bursty traffic, we were getting uh, throttling errors and the messages were going into dead letters. So I was like, eh, let me dive deep. So we uh, learned about reserved concurrency, provisional concurrency. We set up 100 reserved concurrency. We set up 10 provisional concurrency so we can avoid cold starts and other throttling issues. So we took care about all those things. As you can see, um, you know, massive amount of lambdas you're firing, right? Um, so, you know, just a definition about reserved and provisional concurrency. Then the data goes to the data lake. We partition the data using date-based partition. So we can essentially reduce the amount of data scanned by Athena, which allows to save cost further. 
So um, we um, really enjoyed watching this video, improved performance of Amazon Athena, latest update, provided a great insight. Some of the screenshot uh, from the lecture that I have taken uh, about this one, you know, how um, partitioning your data helps you to speed it up. Um, again, joins, right, some of the nice practices. Again, a nice video was scalable, serverless, event-driven application using Amazon SQS and Lambda. We watched uh, this, we understood how SQS work behind the scenes. We understood essentially the visibility timeout, the batch size, batch window, delay time, everything we understood, we configured everything accordingly and we processed the data in batches uh, from SQS. We were essentially also went for long polling. On SQS, you can put the polling time from zero to 20 seconds. Zero is the short polling, 20 is the maximum, that's a long polling. Long polling, you save cost. So we went for a long polling. Then um, uh, we attempted for uh, developing a hybrid um, approach. So bringing data from other sources like SQL, Dynamo, we essentially fired up AWS bad job. The bad job will push the, put the data to the SQS queue and the Lambda takes the data in, 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 in essentially batches and processes it and dumps on the data lake. Anything goes wrong, goes to the dead letter queue and of course SNS and the user gets notified, right? So um, yeah, this is the article, all the references are there. You know, I, I hope you have enjoyed this walkthrough about this small project. Uh, if you have any questions on and any other thing, I'm more than happy to help you out. Uh, the links are in the description section below. Um, so essentially, as I said, right, data from various sources lands into the data lake. We use glue crawlers, crawl, crawlers crawl over the S3 data on a frequency base. Then we use Athena to query that data. We, we perform all sort of data cleaning using, um, uh, you know, glue, 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 glue job, or you use say, AWS data brew. Uh, if something is small, we can, you know, develop a, we also do filtering maybe on Lambda side as well. If something is small, you know, we just fire up Lambdas. For massive amount of data, I mean, uh, if you have much more data, we, we attempt to use fire, uh, data streams, uh, firehose, and, you know, uh, have Lambda, uh, Lambda to filter those messages and then dump it into the data lake. But um, yeah, I'll leave the links in the description. There are a lot of information in this um, article. Videos are there. You can watch videos. You can, you know, learn a lot of things. And um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. Keep smiling, keep programming. See you guys next time.